Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumans Singh, topping our newscast. Major development in the middle of warming relations between the United States and the island nation of Cuba. A major cruise line has just announced its intentions to put at least one ship on Cuba in less than a year. Some lawmakers are concerned about what this could mean in the near future for the territory. News 2's April Knight has that story. The world's largest cruise company, Carnival Corporation, announced Tuesday that the U.S. government granted it permission to travel to Cuba. We intend to sail in May of 2016, assuming we get the Cuban approval. If a deal is struck with the Cuban government, the 710-passenger ship Adonia under Carnival's Fathom brand will soon be sailing to Cuba within U.S. guidelines. That is for social impact and cultural exchange. Tourism Commissioner Beverly Nicholson Doty did not seem too worried when U.S.-Cuban relations began to thaw earlier this year. So it will take a period of years for the infrastructure uh, in Cuba to come to the level of our core market, the American clientele. Notwithstanding, it is not something that we are not closely looking at. So executive branch officials are saying that it'll take some time for Cuba to cater to tourists on the same level as popular Caribbean destinations like the Virgin Islands, but this does not inspire confidence among some lawmakers, a fact only exacerbated by the recent Carnival Cruise Line announcement. There's a frenzy in terms of companies that are already salivating at the, uh, at the thought of uh, doing business right now. I ever heard one peep from the territory of the Virgin Islands. Carnival has also expressed that it's willing to work with the Cuban government on the issue of lack of infrastructure. We'll work with the Cuban uh, uh, relative, you know, relevant players to make certain that, that we have things set so the guest experience exceeds their ex ex expectations as we do with all our guests. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Again, the negotiations have not yet been finalized. Carnival calls on Cuba is contingent upon approval by the Cuban government. Senator Jeanette Millen Young has spoken out on the ongoing humanitarian crisis in the Dominican Republic. According to Dominican officials, the ongoing deportation process is a result of the government's attempt to have all migrants registered. According to the senator, the Dominican government's decision has left a huge population of migrants at risk of deportation with documented evidence of racially motivated violence and allegations of human rights violations. The senator said that she considers leaving people stateless an appalling violation of basic human rights. Count on two to keep you updated. It was the governor's office's turn to testify at a Senate budget hearing Wednesday in the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall in St. Thomas, along with testifiers from the Office of the Governor, were officials from the Bureau of Economic Research, who also testified on their agency's 2016 budget. News News April Night has the tales. The office of the governor came before the Senate Finance Committee on Wednesday to defend their 2016 budget. The office of the governor is committed to rebuild a sound, stable financial, economic, and social environment that will enhance the welfare of all the people of the Virgin Islands. This year, the governor's office is asking for $9.3 million. Almost half of that budget will go to personnel. There are 33 employees in Government House on St. Thomas, 23 in the one in Christiansted, 13 in Frederickstead, and 5 in the Battery on St. John. Included in the budget is $120,000 for three new ceremonial vehicles, two vehicles for the governor split between two districts and one vehicle for the lieutenant governor. More than $700,000 of the budget for the governor's office goes to the Bureau of Economic Research, a research and data generation agency that reports to the governor's fiscal policy advisor. The Bureau is responsible for producing, compiling and analyzing the territory's economic fiscal, financial, and tourism indicators. Of the five BER employees, not one is based on St. Croix, and one senator took issue. You can do half the study because you have nobody based on St. Croix. You have nobody that truly understands the island of St. Croix, the dynamics of our island. You must have somebody based on St. Croix. Bureau officials did say they're working on getting a sixth employee, an economist who would be based on the Big Island. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. 
Stephen Van Beaverhout of the Office of the Inspector General also defended his agency's budget later that afternoon. And we'll have more on the OIG's hearing in a later newscast. Residents who have been complaining about the fungus growing on everything west of Diageo will now get a chance to air their concerns. The Department of Planning and Natural Resources is holding a community town hall meeting this week. They want to get input from the public on the rum fungus allegedly caused by activities from the Diageo and Crucian Rum factories. That meeting is scheduled for Thursday, July 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. It will be held on the St. Croix campus of the University in the theater room 401. A St. Croix man has been demonstrating just blocks from the Seaborne Airlines downtown terminal. He says the fares they've been charging for travel between St. Croix and St. Thomas are outrageous since the company's move to Puerto Rico and the government should take action. News News Erica Parsons has the story. Local activist Ermin Foy has been protesting since last week against high rates at Seaborne Airlines. I've been out here from 6.30 this morning because I'm trying to tell the people who fly downtown to downtown that they should buy cut this airline. Foy says he paid $314 on June 17th for a round-trip ticket from downtown St. Croix to downtown St. Thomas. He admits he didn't have a reservation. It's sad that we have to pay over 200 and something dollars, three, well, it charged me 300 plus to get to St. Damas. Government officials and employees use Seaborne to travel between both districts daily. Foy says the government should sever its ties with the airline and cancel its contracts. I think the government who support this airline the most should pull all ties with this airline, find other road, they got two other airlines flying to St. Damas, use them. Leave this one alone. The government employees retirement system loaned Seaborne nearly $5 million between 2009 and 2012 to expand its business. In December 2013, the company paid off the loan and relocated its base four months later. It's unfair that my system, the GS bail them out when they were on their knees and now they're turning wrong and sticking it to the people of the Virgin Islands. When we checked Seaborne's prices online for the cost from downtown to downtown, the regular same-day fare was $280 round trip, $260 if booked one week ahead. Foy says other carriers are less. People never know that that's the kind of price to go to send them on. I could fly to Florida if I stay a blade go on the internet and for, uh, for that kind of money. Mr. Foy is not alone in his quest for reasonably priced rates. Just this week, travelers filed a lawsuit against four major U.S. carriers for conspiring to keep rates high. Erica Parsons, News 2. News 2 attempted to contact Seaborne Airlines President Gary Foss, but we were told he's currently traveling. The Office of the Lieutenant Governor Division of Banking and Insurance advises the public that an entity named U.S. Virgin Island Money PLC, a.k.a. Virgin Island Money PLC, using the address 3247 Estate Golden Rock Christian said St. Croix 00820, is advertising online at the website http www.vmoonline.com contact php and it's been used as a banking institution in the territory all consumers are advised that this entity is not licensed in the territory to, to conduct any type of banking business that's according to the lieutenant governor osbert potter pursuant to vi code no foreign bank may open any branch or change the location of any branch in the U.S. VI without a permit from the banking board. Potter strongly advises consumers from engaging in any service with this banking institution. Turn our attention overseas. The markets closed down Wednesday after a computer glitch halted trading at the New York Stock Exchange for several hours. Repairs were made in the last hour of trading. Traders made up for lost time late Wednesday, buying and selling before the closing bell. The exchange updated its software last night and solved a minor connectivity issue right before the open, but the system crashed midday. Repairs were made on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. The New York Stock Exchange kept in close contact with Washington during the outage and both confirmed there was no indication of, of any cyber attack. Keeping our eye on the economy, meanwhile, Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. Everything down. The Dow 261, NASDAQ 87, S&P 500 34. Coming up on News 2, a huge honor for two VI high school teachers to receive the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. We'll be right back.
Television producer and director and TV2 and News2 alumni, Natafa Romain won big at the 36th Annual Tele Awards. Romain's JNR Media Solutions took home silver and bronze for USVI ambassadors and Dion Parson and the 21st Century Band Live and Jazz at Lincoln Center, respectively. We caught up with Natafa, who is still riding high on his company's wins. Sandy, we are very excited to have won two tellies this year at the 36th Annual Telly Awards. We won bronze for Dion Parson and 21st Century Band live at Jazz at Lincoln Center. And then we won silver, which is the highest honor at the Telly Awards for U.S. Virgin Islands Ambassadors with the top Romaine. So we're very excited to be bringing these awards home to the Virgin Islands. Not only do these awards represent the hard work of JNR Media Solutions, but it also represents the hardworking, talented people of the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'd like to thank my sponsors, U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism, who partnered with me to create U.S. Virgin Islands Ambassadors. I'd also like to thank First Bank Virgin Islands, exclusive sponsors of closed captioning for U.S. Virgin Islands Ambassadors. And also a major shout out to United Jazz Foundation, who brought me along to produce and direct their live concert at Jazz at Lincoln Center last year. I'd also like to thank TV2 for providing us with the platform to air these awesome shows. And we're looking forward to bringing you a lot more stuff coming up in the near future. Congrats from all of us here at CBS TV2, Natafa. St. Thomas St. John District Science Department Chairpersons Nika Howard Sibley of Sheldon Molly High School and Shamika Williams Henley of Ivana Yudorkin High School they are among 108 recipients named by President Barack Obama as this year's recipients of the prestigious Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. Honorees comprised of 7th to 12th grade teachers will receive a $10,000 award and later this summer they are invited to Washington DC for an award ceremony. It assures them of the outstanding STEM instruction they have been imparting to students and attests to their exemplary performance throughout the years. That's from Commissioner Sharon Ann McCollum. That's what she said of the awardees. Con congratulations. Well, this Thursday night, July 9th, Meredith Refschneider, a PhD candidate in archaeology at Stanford University, Stanford, California, will present to the public her ongoing findings around her archaeological survey and excavation of a plantation hospital at Estate Cane Garden, St. Croix, which dates from the late 18th century to the beginning of the 20th century. The goal of this research project is to understand how Danish medical policies were implemented, contested, or received by various individuals. The lecture will be held from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the Danish Guinea West India Company. The 28th Annual Golf Junior Championships is going on this week on St. Croix. The tournament began Monday, and Governor Kenneth Mapp and other officials were on hand to welcome the young golfers. But this event also means an economic boost for the Big Island. News News' Erica Parsons has the story. 81 young golfers from eight Caribbean countries are participating in this year's Caribbean Golf Association's Junior Championships. This event is an annual event held every summer. Um, this year we have eight countries participating. The golfers range in age from 11 to 17. They hit the links at the Carambola Golf Course Tuesday, competing in three divisions. It's the very, very best endeavor kids can get into because it builds strength of character, it builds their integrity, it builds their honesty. Countries host the tournament every 10 years. It's the second time the VI is hosting. The golf championship event has been a boost for St. Croix, happening during the summer when the hotel business is typically slow. I said we have 81 kids. We have about 140 in total, so we have 60 followers just about. Uh, the economic impact is very, very great. They're using hotels. They, haven't, they have to go to restaurants. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Carambola Hotel, the Renaissance Hotel, is full right now. The Carambola Hotel right now is full. We even have to, um, I think we sent a couple of people down to Arawak Hotel as well. And we also have people staying in some of the, the villas, the golf villas. Hosting golf tournaments, it's one of the best tourism, sports tourism efforts that there is. So this is a good thing for the island, good thing for, um, for our region, um, especially with the hard times um, economically. Um, you know, this is a little boost for St. Croix, which is something that we really need. Especially when the best juniors are performing. Erica Parsons, News 2.
Well, Thursday is the last day of that tournament at the Carambola Golf Course. For those who are interested, next year's event will be in Jamaica. So the VI Golf Association will be fundraising to get there. The artwork of St. Croix artist Lucien Downs will represent the USVI in the Textile Museum of Canada's Watercolor Cultural Project, presented in partnership with the 2015 Pan, Pan Am Parapan American Games that's being held in Toronto from July 10th to the 26th, along with the artwork of 40, 40 other artists from around the globe. Downs painting, Phoenix Rising, will be digitally reproduced and printed onto fabric to create boat sails and banners. The event celebrates the culture and will feature artwork by one artist from each participating country, a total of 41. Congratulations to him. Be sure to stick around. Your News 2 Accu, News 2 Accu the Forecast is coming up next.